Allen Edmonds makes some great dress shoes. While the price can be a little bit high for people that aren't used to it, they are made in America, the quality is top notch, and all of their styles are classic and timeless, meaning they will survive the fashion trends that come and go. Now they've recently come out with a new collection called their Reserve Collection. Now these shoes that they're calling the Reserve definitely looks like a big step up in terms of quality, although the price increase is pretty eye-watering. So today we're gonna take a look at these shoes as well as some of their other more classic styles that they've had for a long time since their Made in America sale comes around every October and depending on when you're watching this video, it might be happening right now or definitely less than one month from when this video is being filmed. And we'll also discuss some more affordable alternatives if Allen Edmonds is too pricey for you or it's just not your style. Welcome to the video, let's get right into it. All right, just sharing the screen right now, you could see we are on there main website 10% off new for fall that one actually looks pretty good everyone's really excited about fall in the fashion space fall is one of the best times for men's or women's fashion or any fashion and right up here they actually have reserve so let's take a look at this Allen Edmonds reserve the highest quality handcrafted most highest quality handcrafted American shoes have ever made great Correct for the connoisseurs an object and obsession Boom. That one actually looks pretty nice. They have the Maxwell Derby, which looks like it's a nice plain toe derby. Again, derby means that you see the way that the shoes right there are open, open lacing. That means the shoe is actually going to fit more. It's going to fit people's foot better. It fits my foot much better. It's going to be easier to put on and off and also a little bit easier to dress down, a little bit less stuffy. So the Maxwell Derby is actually pretty decent. And here is the Mason Wingtip Derby. This is the one, I like wingtips. This is the one that I would be going for. If you could see, this is actually a long wing brogue. You see the way that the shoe, it just kind of goes all the way around. It doesn't just terminate right here in the midfoot. It goes all the way around. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's take a look at the McAllister right here. This is just a Google image. You see the way the brogue actually just comes and then terminates right here. Actually, I have it right here. What am I? I could just show you. So if we take a look at my McAllister's, you see the way that the broguing, the tip comes all the way over here and then it terminates right here. It does not wrap around right here. There is a gap right here. Now on the Mason, we have the broguing wraps from the toe all the way around to the back. So again, McAllister, the broguing just stops right here and then a new one comes to the back. The long wing, it goes all the way over to the back. Now for me, this isn't really as big of a deal. Long wing brogues are actually the most casual brogues that you can get, but it doesn't tell the whole story. I would say that these aren't as heavily decorated as the McAllister. We have a couple of pictures of the McAllister right here. You see the way the, this is just a very heavily broged shoe. The Mason wingtip looks like it is a little bit a lot actually a lot less decoration so while yes it being a long wing derby and the McAllister being a classic standard wingtip Oxford with that closed lacing the McAllister should be more dressy but this shoe still looks pretty sleek still looks like you can dress it up pretty well and I'd have no problem wearing this all the way up with a suit and here is the Oxford this one's pretty nice as well I currently don't have a pair of black Oxfords so this would be great for me however we'll talk about why I'm not going to get these black Oxfords I'm currently just subbing them in with some cheaper Cole Haan all black shoes and then we've got some wingtip boots the Maddox wingtip boots this one I don't love I don't love the way you see this detail right here how it just kind of wraps around I don't love that I also don't love that it's also a whoopsies I also don't love that it's still a long wing. If we see, if I hover over, I, I, I can't show you. But if you take a look at, it's again, it's a long wing, just like the Mason we were just talking about. Got no problems with long wing shoes, but with the boots, I think the boots look better if they just terminate, just take a turn and go down right there. I think it's just much better. Here's an example of the Dalton. You see it just terminates right here. My opinion, this one just looks like a more streamlined boot, just overall nicer, whereas the Maddox wingtip just, it just looks a little bit funny. It looks a little bit off to me, especially with this little cutout they've got going on right there. All right, on the shopping page, an eye-watering 800 
dollars. Are they insane? This is almost twice as much as a standard McAllister wingtip, a standard Park Avenue. Are they really going to be twice the quality, twice the shoe of the Park Avenues, the other shoes that are $425? Maybe, maybe. They probably did this they put the price up, that way they can put it on sale and sell it for 700 or 650. I think they should have priced it around 650 or 700 maximum. However, we live in a world today where everything is just going up in price. We've got inflation, hyperinflation here coming toward the end of 2024. It is what it is, a couple of hundred dollars if you like the shoe, 600 to 700, 800 shouldn't be that big of a deal if you're hell bent on getting these shoes. So here is the Mason, we talked about this. I am not in love. I don't think these walnut ones look good at all with these burnishing. They, I don't think they did a good job with this. However, I'm not really into the walnut shoes anymore. I like the chili or the dark chili or the black. And there is the Maxwell plain toe. Actually looks like a pretty decent boot. Here is the reserve wing tip. And there is a couple of other ones. And here you could see it just doesn't look as nice as the Dalton. Doesn't look as nice as the Dalton wing tip. And this one is a thousand dollars a thousand dollars for this boot that's insane thousand dollars and this is three thousand dollars three thousand dollars it looks like it's a crocodile leather or some special leather i, I ain't paying three thousand for a pair of shoes you, you wear them in the rain I, I don't know that's just me though maybe you're different let's take a look let's dive into one of the models and see if we could figure out why they're so expensive all right pretty nice pretty nice so they're making enough money they can put some really nice Really nice videos on their page. <laughs> You're welcome, Alan Edmonds. Chili leather looks really good. Navy, this is pretty cool if that's your thing. I, I wear too much blue, so I can't get I can't wear blue shoes. The black looks okay. Navy looks cool. I, I wouldn't get it. Walnut, I'm not into. I don't like these burnishings around here. I would get this one in chili leather. Back order, of course. 11 and a half E, that's my size. And it looks like now it looks like these do come with a double leather sole, and that's actually pretty important. The double leather sole that I've tried on the Dalton wingtip dress boot. This is the most comfortable dress boot and dress shoe I've ever had. That double sole, absolutely worth its weight in gold. So I'm really glad that they put the double sole on these boots. Because although they're crazy expensive for what they are, after you empty your wallet on a single pair of shoes, at least you can know that your feet probably aren't going to hurt. Your feet are gonna be feeling pretty good, as they should if you spent $800 on a single pair of shoes. I don't see any type of branding. Maybe I was hoping this was gonna be a better outsole, but let's take a look. Any information over here? Here we go. Highest quality handcrafted American shoes we've made. Highest quality handcrafted American shoes we've ever made. Maybe my English is wrong. The highest quality, the most highest quality, whatever. So they're saying it's the best shoe they ever made. Classic built from the ground up. Each deserved archives. So, so they bought the styles back from their archives. That's good. The very best. Only the very best materials used at each stage of the construction process. Great. I mean, for 800 bucks, you know, it's kind of expected. Style, long wing derby dress shoe with broke detailing and toe medallion. We already went over that. Traditional detailing like wheeling and a signature on our signature Goodyear welt, bench welt. I don't really know what wheeling is. I I don't know. It's probably, I don't know. Goodyear welt. Classic fit, take your regular size, whatever that means. Split reverse Goodyear welt embodies classic American style. I think the split reverse welt, split reverse Goodyear welt, pretty sure that's basically a storm welt or similar, very similar to a storm welt. So that means that the shoes, water's not going to get in through the welt. It's a little bit more water resistant than just a standard Goodyear welt. Nice to see over there. It looks like they've got Italian leather lining, double leather, double layer Italian vegetable tan, vegetable tanned, Italian vegetable tan leather soles that are hand stained and painted with a two-tone finish. Great, double, love it. Leather top tips with a dove strike heel. Are these? I hope there's rubber on there. I think that's usually rubber. You need to have rubber on the heels if you have a leather sole, otherwise you're gonna be slip sliding away. But normally there is on higher end shoes, like these are like these are more higher end than the normal shoes, you are going to get the rubber on the bottom. Whereas something like the McAllister, you're gonna get the whole rubber thing over here. And this is just a plain sole, but I did put a sole protector on myself. 
So that's pretty cool right there. Definitely looks good. Custom cork insoles layered under responsive Pora. That's actually pretty interesting. So custom cork all dress shoes or higher end dress shoes actually have that like Allen Edmonds. Poron actually gives a little bit more comfort. So these shoes with a double sole and the custom cork, which is with every sole, every Allen Edmonds and the Poron, these should probably be very, very, very comfortable. You probably won't have any issues with comfort at all. And since it is a much higher quality leather from Italy, it's Italian leather, these shoes are probably gonna be very, very, very soft, very comfortable for you to wear. If anyone, if anyone watched a couple of my videos that I did about the Allen Edmonds McAllister, if you missed it, you can look it up right there. It's gonna pop up in a minute, but I took these out in a couple of long walks. First, they were tight around the sides, then they were tight up here. I could never get it to 100%, only get it to like a seven or eight out of 10. Underfoot comfort is fine, not great, but it's fine. But the shoe just felt a bit too tight with that Oxford style. Again, you see how it's closed lacing. It hurt up here or it was hurting over here. There was always some sort of a pain point on these shoes after taking them to two or three miles. And a softer leather and a double leather sole actually would alleviate all those problems with this shoe. So it looks like with this shoe, the Mason Long Wing, which $800, would probably, probably going to be a much more comfortable fit for me and for anyone else that's had any of the issues with the standard Allen Edmonds as far as comfort goes. Leather top, okay, handcrafted in Port Washington, upper materials, calf skin, both sourced from the best European hides. So I'm not really too into leather, but it looks like it's it's pretty it's pretty up there as far as, that's probably why the leather is, that's probably why the shoe is so expensive. Can be recrafted, sure, built on the reserve collection. Our best-selling 65 last, so 1965 last is the same last of the Allen Edmonds, same last, uh, same last as the Park Avenue, same last as the Strand, and the McAllister that I just showed you. Produced in small batches due to the intensive construction process. Great, cool. Um, hopefully there's no quality issues. See, so this would be my first pick, the Mason Reserve Wingtip Derby Dress Shoe in, in the Chili Leather. My second pick, I really do like the Plain Toe. This is pretty much just same same shoe or it looks like the same shoe i would not go anywhere near the crocodile leather yeah croc leather i would not pay no i do not need three thousand dollars shoes i don't need five hundred dollars shoes i would say the chili leather here is good as well it looks a little bit more of a burnished brown black is also great since i don't have black dress shoes and having a black dress shoe like this with the open lacing and the double sole does dress it down just a little bit it means it's a bit easier to wear in more casual situations but chili is always great and what was I saying before? Yep, 65 last. So this basically the Reserve, uh, the Mason, and the Maxwell, both on the 1965 last. So that would be my two picks. And is there anything else? Anything else I would do? I personally wouldn't go near the Oxford just because I find that Oxfords aren't really that comfortable for me. My right foot, I have a higher end step. I just find the shoe more constrictive, whereas with the Derby, the open lacing, you can see the Derby right here, even though when my my mouse, here we go, the Derby right below here is a little bit, it's just more a more forgiving fit, more comfortable, just roomier, just overall better. You can wear thicker socks in the winter too, thicker wool socks you have a lot less options with the Oxford style shoe, even though traditionally it is more it is more dressy. So that's what I would do. I would look at those two. I would stay away from the walnut color. Um, and then I would have to take a look at, I mean, this is too expensive, honestly. This is way too expensive. I'd have to take a look at this and actually see it on foot because although it looks pretty pretty rough right now just on the web page and I'm not a fan of long wing boots I, I prefer long wing sh long wing shoes are fine but long wing boots it's almost like why um you know I don't know but I'd have to see him in real life I'd have to see him on feet and let's actually take a look at yeah there's so this just there that's just their uh their soul so the only one, the only one that I'm really interested in here and that I could see myself pulling the trigger on eventually when I have the money would be the reserve wingtip dress shoe. This could be my one nice dress shoe that I could wear anytime I need to wear dress shoes. And I have a ton of other cheaper, more affordable options, more and very comfortable options for wearing for long walks in the rain, just as beater dress shoes like the Cole Haan Original Grand. But this is the one that I could see myself spending over five or 600 on. We'll see what happens around the sale. 
Uh, you might like the other ones. Again, I wear too much navy. I'm not into the boot. I'm not into the Oxford. The plain toe is pretty cool, but I mean, it doesn't make sense to have to have it in brown. I don't know. That's kind of what I would look at. A couple of negatives with these shoes. Number one, the price. Of course, they are very expensive. I mean, for we don't know if they're worth eight hundred dollars. I'm sure that. You know, Allen Edmonds doesn't seem to be a company that's pricing things high just to gouge their clients. Back in 2017, 2018, they the shoes costed the uh, the Park Avenues and McAllisters cost of 385. Then they raised them to 395. So they've only had to ra only raise them when they really need to. They don't raise the price exorbitantly every year like some other manufacturers do and just say, well, inflation, just to make extra money off the backs of its consumers. So they're, they're pretty fair when it comes to, or historically they've been pretty fair when it comes to price. They haven't, I haven't seen them price gouge cons the consumers. That being said, $800, I wish it was 750, 700. They used to have a collection called the, I forgot what it was called, Independence Collection a long time ago, and that was price of 650, 700. So actually, I might, it might have been 750. So the price, not psyched on, but if it's worth it, it's worth it. Again, $800 is a lot of money, but if you're getting $800 worth of shoe, then it's definitely worth it. And so we'll have to see about that. I don't know if any reviews are gonna come out. Not a lot of people make Alan Edmonds videos. One other thing I don't like, this, this sole. Where's the JR Rendenbach sole? Where's the Johan Rendenbach sole? I was really expecting the, uh, when I saw this price, I was looking at the Johan Rendenbach sole. And the Rendenbach sole, let's see. Well, I was gonna say the Rendenbach sole is usually better for, it, it's like the best leather sole that you can get. It's the most water resistant. It is, it, it lasts the longest, but there's a Reddit post I just found right here that says, the, J Re the Johan Rendenbach Tannery is closing. News that the Johan Rendenbach Tannery is closing. So, yeah, the, uh, maybe that's why. Maybe that's why Alan Edmonds didn't do that. So I take that back. Maybe they didn't have a choice. They just had to come out with their, come out with their own. So I take that back about the JR Souls. I would love it if they added some sort of a butyl sole here or an option for a butyl sole, just so that if the ground's wet, you don't shred your expensive shoes. But there are always other options to water resistance. You could just throw on a cheap, a cheap top sole like I did, or I'm sure you can put some sort of uh, waterproofing on the bottom if that way you can keep the leather sole look, but you're not gonna shred them away in the rain or if the ground's wet from the rain you know, overnight. So that is their reserve collection and I watering $800. We'll have to see. I think if you can afford it, these probably are going to be, I don't think you'll be dissatisfied. If you could afford it and you have a reason to get them, then absolutely go ahead, give them a shot. Your reason might just be that you like nice shoes like me, or maybe you actually do go out there and you have to wear dress shoes for work if you're still going to the office. All right, now we talk about more classic, more affordable options. We've got the Park Avenue Capto dress shoe. This one is a great option if you're just starting out. If you just want that one shoe, you know it's gonna work for you. It comes in a whole bunch of different colors. You can't go wrong with black for a shoe like this. I actually also like the mahogany. The mahogany is a really nice option. Of course, the chili is good. Chili is my favorite, but chili can be a little bit too casual sometimes. So I either go with the black or the mahogany leather. The mahogany is actually really nice. And can you actually, let's see if we could actually customize the soles. Uh, it's loading, it's loading, it's loading. Round dress. Oh, they still have the Rendenbach. So they actually give you single oak, butyl, Double butyl. This is this is the sole that's on the that's on the uh, Dalton wingtips, which makes it so good. So you can go double butyl. You can still go go Rendenbach. Double Rendenbach. Rendenbach. Double Rendenbach. Double Rendenbach. Double butyl. All right. So five twenty five. Not bad. So that that double butyl sole does make a difference of one hundred dollars. If you ask me, it is one hundred percent worth it. You're paying for a shoe that's going to be a lot more robust in the real world elements, and also a shoe that's going to be a lot more comfortable than just a single leather sole, single layer leather, single layer leather sole. That is. So that's pretty cool. So you're going to have to wait a little while. It's final sale, obviously, and it's going to take eight weeks. But that's that's definitely an option. That's something that I would do. 
Let's take a look at some other options. Now this is the one that I'm actually pretty interested in. I'm not gonna buy it because I don't have a need for it. I don't have the budget for it, honestly, at this point, but this is the Park Avenue Derby dress shoe. And this is really cool. Remember I was talking about, remember I was talking about all the issues I have with wearing the Oxford with the clothes lacing and it just felt too tight and too restrictive. This actually might solve all of the issues being a derby shoe. And honestly, let's take a look at it in black. This is still very, very dressy. I mean, just take a look at it. Really nice. You can customize your sole. Again, I think that the mahogany leather is absolutely beautiful. The dark chili is cool, but I would save dark chili for the wingtips or a little bit more of the casual options. But yeah, these things look absolutely great. Again, black shoes or, you know, when you need them, you need them. You don't always need black shoes, but when you need them, there's no substitute. So if you don't have anything, really think about the black shoes. But for me, if, if you already have a pair of cheaper black, black shoes that you can wear for black dress shoes, this mahogany leather is absolutely beautiful. So love to see that. Boots. Dress boots are super comfortable. I kept going on about the Dalton. This thing is super comfortable. This is definitely, definitely a, a great option. However, this is not on my list of purchasing this year and we will, we will talk about why, but let's get into some of the other boots. So you've got the Chelsea boot right here. I must be one of the only people that don't like Chelsea boots. Just something about them. I, I just don't like them. I don't know what it is. It's too plain. I, I don't know. Everyone says they're amazing. I don't like them. I don't know what it is. Chukka boot, eh, it's cool. Chukka is usually pretty uncomfortable because you don't have much, you don't have laces. I found my foot usually floats around in them. This is more of like an engineer type style boot or a cowboy boot. That's pretty cool. I'm, I'm not into that, but you know, if you are cool. Lugged boot, no. This, I like the color on this one. Park Avenue dress boot, this is dress boot that's pretty cool. Although again, it's it's a closed lacing, so closed lacing boot just for me doesn't make any sense. But maybe it's more comfortable than the Oxford. I wouldn't get it though. We talked about this, and here is the boot that I have. I really enjoy this boot. I got it actually right over there. This is a great boot, five hundred bucks. They'll probably put this one on sale for around four hundred. Uh, the Higgins Mill, I've. My first pair of Higgins Mail, I still have. They're, they're great shoes. They've lasted forever. I bought them back in 2016, so I've had them eight years. But I think that they discontinued those and they're just making the weatherproof ones right now. Weatherproof ones are actually better anyway. They breathe better. The original Higgins Mill was a little bit too hot for me. If your feet are very sensitive to the temperature, you get hot feet in the summer, cold feet in the winter, or you, you know your feet don't do well with boots and shoes that don't breathe, the weatherproof one breathes a bit better, which I don't know how they did it. Maybe they used different leather, but that's just how it is. This is great since if it's raining, if it's snowing, you don't have to just revert to wearing your cheaper waterproof Echoes Thursdays. You could still wear a nice boot that's going to be able to dress up, be dressed up pretty well, and, and you're not going to ruin it, and you're not going to get soaked socks. Your socks aren't going to get wet either. So this is pretty cool. I do enjoy this one. A landed cap toe boot. I actually saw this one in person a couple of years ago and I was actually really impressed with it. If I had no boots, this would be the one that I would get. There is, compared to the Dalton, there is no uh, little heel loop right there. You know, the loop that you stick in your hand. You know, this loop right here, it's helpful for putting the boots on, but sometimes your pants get caught on it. It can actually be pretty frustrating. So that's pretty cool. Speed hooks, the whole nine yards, day night sole. This is, this is actually a really nice boot and the pictures don't do it justice. It's similar to the Thursday Captain, although it's more than twice the price of the Thursday Captain, but it's, it's probably gonna last a lot longer than the Thursday Captain, honestly. Uh, so this is the one that I'd be looking at if I was in the market for boots this year. All right, we got a couple more options. I actually tried this one a few years ago, the Patan Patton, I don't know how you say it. Didn't like it, couldn't get a good fit on it. A couple of other things too. They've got a, a lined Chelsea boot. It's not bad, not bad. Hamilton, this is more like the Strand cap toe Oxford boot. Actually not bad. But again, it's that Oxford boot and that closed lacing boot I'm not into. You might be into it, but I'm not and a couple things all right dalton one of the best boots they ever made why shouldn't you get it well you can't get it 
they discontinued this boot. I don't know why they did it. I hope they didn't just replace it with that monstrosity we saw from the reserve collection, whatever it was called, the, the long wing boot. But if you ask me, that was a big mistake. This is the best shoe that I've worn from Allen Edmonds. It's the most comfortable, it's the most versatile. You can, I have it right here. You can dress it up, you can dress it down. At one point I was gonna get rid of these boots, but honestly, super, super comfortable. It has that double butyl outsole. I did run it without the rubber top lift for a long time. I wore it in the rain. I didn't like wearing it in the rain, but no problem at all. These things, they're, they're just really nice dress boots and honestly I'd be okay with not having any dress shoes and just having this one dress boot that you can dress up and dress down. Yes you can wear it in the summer because it's regular calf leather. It's not thick leather. It's just a high top dress shoe so if you're wearing pants you can wear this boot but as you can see they are out of stock and that's it. They, they discontinued it. Hopefully they'll come out with something new and I hope it's not a McAllister boot that has the the closed lacing right there, but it is what it is. It's what we gotta deal with. So if, if you've got the Daltons, enjoy them. I'm gonna enjoy mine. If you can find a pair, old stock, great. More power to you. But uh, yeah, they that's it. In their infinite wisdom, they don't make them anymore. All right, so that's Allen Edmonds. What if you don't wanna spend a lot of money on Allen Edmonds? Well, I can introduce you to Beckett Simonon. Beckett Simonon reached out to me a while ago, probably about a year ago, and they said, hey, we'd like to send you a pair of shoes, just talk about them. And I did have to wait a long time because they're all made to order, but I can honestly say the shoes are really good. $219, so they're, they're very affordable, a lot more affordable than the Allen Edmonds. Are they gonna last as long as Allen Edmonds? Probably not, but I mean, these are the ones that I have, the Kent wingtips. These things have been great comfortable, soft, water resistant. They've got a rubber sole. They are Blake stitched, which is similar to a Goodyear welt, so you can still get them resold if you need to. I These things are great. These things are absolutely great. They've held up great. So I would definitely say if you want a more affordable option than the Allen Edmonds, then yeah, something like this is gonna be a, a better bet. It's gonna be a lot easier on your wallet. And I don't, I was looking at the Dean Oxfords, since I don't have, you know, I got to get rid of my Park Avenues, but I don't feel like paying 425 or 350 for them on sale. Uh, and something like Beckett Simonon, so far I, I enjoy them. So something like this, I'd rather get a pair of black shoes from Beckett Simonon because they're just a lot more affordable. But like I said, the Oxfords, I don't really like the closed lacing Oxfords anymore. They're not that comfortable. So something, these are the Derbies. Not really into the split toes. That's interesting. It's like a wingtip without the broguing, without decoration. I saw one looking for open lacing, open lacing. Put him in a tan so you can see him. This is pretty interesting. Almost looks like a, it almost looks like a low chucka boot, but something like this I'd probably, this I'd probably get just because you have that you have that open lacing. Let's put it in a, yeah, you can see it better. See, you got that open lacing right there, still very dressy and won't break the bank. Leather sole, is it a leather sole? Yeah, it's le leather sole. So I don't know how long their leather sole would last, but for a shoe like this, I would definitely, I definitely just do what I did before and throw on the rubber stickies in the bottom just to, just so the shoe doesn't wear out forever. Because even though they're cheap, it's it's a pain. I don't know, I've, I've only had one pair of shoes resold and it wasn't that bad, but I'd hate to get a shoe like this and then wear them and then six months later had to just drop them off at a random cobbler since Beckett Simonon. I don't think that they, I don't think that they offer any reselling services like Allen Edmonds does. Might be wrong, but I don't think so. So that's what I would do if you want a more affordable, classic style dress shoe these things definitely definitely pretty good definitely awesome now what if you want something a little bit less dressy a little bit more casual that's where i'd say definitely take a look at the cole han you can see this guy right here is wearing it looks like a pair of some, some wingtip grand they're grand they call them grand g-r-a-n-d 
Looks like he's wearing some sort of a leather shoe with the sneaker outsole. Could probably walk 10 miles, go for a run if he wants. I know that's what I do. Here is the Chelsea boot. Uh, this is actually a Chelsea boot I like. Just I just maybe I just like the the white outsoles. But let's take a look at what is what they have. I got a couple of penny loafers, a couple of driving shoes. This is one of their classic dress shoes. Three hundred. At this point, I would go with Beckett Simonon if you're going to spend three hundred on Cole Hans. This one's actually pretty good. The original Grand Waterproof wingtip. This is pretty good. Navy blue outsole. It's not as good as a white one, a white outsole, or just a brown outsole like the ones that I have. But uh, this is pretty good. This is pretty good. Waterproof sneakers, pretty much. 200 bucks. Wait for a sale. This might be nice. If you don't need to wear real dress shoes to work, this is what I would do. I've, I've actually really enjoyed the original Grand wingtips. But let's see. Original Grand shoes, that is. Uh, looks like they original Grand 2.0. It's kind of interesting. I don't love the uh, perforations on top, but it's a casual shoe anyway. And it looks like they made the outsole a bit bigger, but overall still looks pretty decent. Still looks okay. 230, a uh, little high, but you know, for a, this is definitely a step up from sneakers. So if you're just looking for a nicer shoe to wear to the office and your business casual, then these would be great. Let's see what else they have. Still got the, the zero grands. I like the original grands better. And here is the ones, here are the ones that I have. These are great. They don't look this good in real life. Uh, actually, this is what they look like in real life. So, not too bad. Definitely like a, a, a step up from sneakers. This can never replace a dress shoe, but if you gotta walk a long time and you don't need to wear dress shoes, something like this, it's pretty good. This looks like it's the remastered, so it might be a little bit higher quality, but the ones I just showed you, there's gonna be Amazon links below this video. You can get them for about 100, 100 uh, below $150 on Amazon. So that's pretty cool. This is actually a really nice color. I wear this one a lot just because this is more casual and more, I just think this is nice. You can't dress this one up as much with the light colored sole, but I really enjoy this color. I, I wear it a lot more. And I usually wear this with shorts in the summertime if I have to wear something nicer than sneakers. I wear it with khakis or jeans in the fall and winter. As soon as I need to put on a blazer or sport coat or suit, I go straight to my dress shoes or dress or my, my Dalton dress boots. But these are great. If you're just looking to step up from sneakers and you don't want to wear boots or you don't want to wear chukkas, something like this is great. So those are some of Alan Edmonds' newer shoes and some of the more classic shoes that I would be looking at if I were you. And if Alan Edmonds is a little bit too expensive for you, even on sale, or if you just don't like their styles, you could definitely look at something like Beckett Simonon if you do want that classic dress shoe style. And if you want something a bit more casual, I can always recommend the Cole Haan Original Grand. Yes, it's very polarizing. A lot of people don't like those shoes, but they're definitely a step up from sneakers. No one can argue that. So if you just wanna have something that you're gonna be walking forever, but you don't wanna wear your sneakers, you don't wanna wear your Vans old schools, then definitely take a look at some of those hybrid shoes from Cole Hans. So that's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. There'll be a video that pops up right over here that you should watch next and definitely check out this playlist over here. It's one of many that are on this channel and I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, thanks for watching.